welcome to the top shelf. Don't you love being welcomed to virtual spaces? Anyway, uh, check this out. This is a ICOM IC2SAT. It's an old amateur radio I received from my dad. Um, it's been sitting up in this box, which is my amateur radio stuff, um, for quite some time. I wanted to put it to use, but I could never figure out what to use it for. I finally figured out something to use it for, and that is picking up the NOAA weather radio and broadcasting it onto the internet. The reason I chose to do this is because I was bored and I was looking on the Craigslist volunteering section. Someone posted that in Stevens County, which is north of Spokane County, they couldn't receive the Spokane transmission from all areas. So they wanted someone to pick up the audio and broadcast it onto the internet. I was like, whoa, I could totally do this. For this project, I needed a spare computer, a radio of some sort. Whoa, look at that. There's this radio I have sitting around. So that's what I did. I connected this radio to this laptop and this laptop is running some software called Liquid Soap. Interesting library name, uh, but Liquid Soap is designed to help people stream audio online. It's really flexible software. There's no graphic user interface. You have to do a little reading in the manual and know how to you know some general scripting stuff, but the, it's very, very well documented. Um, it's very professional software too. Liquid Soap is a scripting language, and you script what you want to happen with your audio. I'll get to my script in a little bit, but first I want to show you, this is a charging dock. It's meant to charge a battery. Um, it's not even plugged in. All it's doing is holding the radio upright so it doesn't tip over. The radio is being powered by this connector here, which goes down to a wall wart. A challenge I had with this thing was the radio has a audio out jack, which is perfect. And this is going to a custom box I made. Uh, the reason I needed this was because this is a laptop. Most laptops don't have a line-in jack. If you don't know, line-level audio is what the average earphones and speakers expect. It's a certain voltage level of audio. Uh, a microphone jack does not use line-level audio. And in fact, if you put line-level audio on a microphone jack, you could damage your sound card. I've done that in the past when I was playing around with Extreme Toaster Radio, and I actually fried my microphone jack. The mistake I made was using one of these auxiliary cables to connect the line out of the computer, the lime green color, the one that goes to your speakers, to the microphone in jack. After doing that, no microphone was really usable on that computer. The microphone would still pick up sound, but it was very low level and muffled. Nobody on TeamSpeak could understand me. I had to switch to a USB microphone. So I, of course, didn't want to fry another sound card, so what I did was found a schematic online. After a quick Ecosia search, yay, plant some trees, I found this stack exchange question, which the person wanted to do this exact thing. Here's the schematic they proposed, and it was validated by the community. It's a very simple circuit. It uses a 10K resistor and a 1K resistor. The circuit uses these two resistors to lower the voltage of the audio signal from the radio. Here's the breadboard I used to test the circuit. Here's the 10K resistor, and here's the 1K resistor. I made the circuit a little more permanent using this old D-Link SIP device housing. On the back is just a piece of foam because I lost the bottom. Let's take a look inside. This white thing is a piece of Adafruit Permaproto, which is a perf board um, laid out just like a breadboard. I made the identical circuit on this permaproto board. The permaproto board is glued to a piece of foam which is glued to the housing. I found the pinouts of the average 3.5 millimeter audio jack. I soldered some male header pins to each wire and I soldered the pins to the appropriate places on the permaproto. And of course I used a lot of heat shrink. This one pin is not connected. That's on purpose because the audio signal coming from the radio is a mono audio signal. That means only one channel is being used. Instead of there being a left channel and a right channel, it's just left channel. The same thing on this end. One of these wires is not connected. There it is, plugged into the microphone input, and it's getting a safe level from the radio, thanks to that circuit. Just in case this radio ever turns off, I programmed in the frequency of the NOAA weather radio to the memory zero slot on this radio. So if it gets turned off, it comes back to that channel. And I've got a reminder here where I need to set the audio level to. It needs to go to 50%. Also, if the channel selector is bumped, nothing happens because there is no other frequencies programmed into the memory bank. Now let's talk about my Liquid Soap script. Here it is on my GitHub. When Liquid Soap runs, first thing it does is tell it to log any output to the screen. In case there are any errors, I can look in the logs later and see what was wrong. Next it says, use the microphone input. 
Here it's a Pulse audio device with a human readable ID called ICOM via microphone. These are some other things I tried but didn't end up using. Next it takes the raw audio and encodes it into an MP3. It's using a constant bit rate, a mono signal, a sample rate, and a bit rate of kind of a low quality, which is perfect for streaming over the internet. Next liquid soap creates an IceCast output. IceCast is a audio server which is running on wonderground.com. I don't know if Wonderground is global or not, but they take these audio streams from all over and publish them on their website. You can see the list at wonderground.com slash wxradio. For some reason, my stream isn't showing up on this list, even though I'm broadcasting to their servers. I sent them an email about that, but... Finally, I needed a way for this laptop to start and stop streaming in case the laptop rebooted. For that, I created a Upstart script. Upstart is a program that runs on Ubuntu that handles starting and stopping system services. Here we can see my script. It's got a description. Uh, version, author, this is the user to run as, the Chris user, um, this is the daemon to run, the daemon being a program that runs in the background, the program is liquid soap, and the path to the config file that I just showed you. The respond directive tells upstart to restart the process in case it crashes for some reason. There's also a limit to say if it's restarting and then crashing and then restarting and crashing, it'll just stop the program because there's probably something really wrong that the user needs to take care of. Then there's the run level. Run levels are the levels at which the operating system goes through when starting and stopping. Don't quote me on this, but one is something like loading, two through five are the desktop session is running. This is saying start when the desktop is running and stop when the desktop is not running. Finally, here's what upstart does when it starts this service. It uses sudo to run as user chris. It, it sets the microphone input level to 12%, and that's just to keep things consistent in case the system changed it for some reason. And then the main upstart execution is to run as user Chris, daemon, liquid soap, with the config file. And that's it. In case there's any problems with upstart, there's two places I can check for logs, which is ver log syslog and ver log upstart liquid soap dot log. So there you have it. An older laptop has a new purpose, and the older radio has the same. Now let's take a moment to hear the stream. An easy way to get to the stream is go to audiostream.wonderground.com and search for Spokane. There it is, the Spokane Washington Weather Radio. You can click click to listen, which opens in VLC for me. The wind was west gusting to 26. At Pullman, the wind was west gusting to 25. This is normal weather radio station WXL 86 in Spokane. 24-hour climate data for surrounding locations ending at Friday, 11.17 a.m. Coeur d'Alene Airport, high temperature 84, low temperature 54. Well, that's it. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.